Hi, I'm Raya, and in this video, I'm going to be going over the portfolio that I used to apply to art school. By the way, this is my microphone if you didn't know. I applied to five different art schools, which include Pratt Institute, Parsons in New York, SCAD, California Institute of the Arts, and Rhode Island School of Design. And I'm very thankful to say that I got accepted into all of them. I still <laughs> can't believe it, and I'm very, very grateful. It's crazy. In this video, I won't exactly be giving tips on how to get into art school or how to make a good portfolio because I don't think I'm qualified yet to tell you what works and what doesn't work. Um, the process of admissions is very unpredictable, and a lot of schools can prefer different things. So I will say that the biggest help for me when putting my portfolio together has been this channel on YouTube called Art Prof. They give a lot of good critiques and tutorials, so I'd say everything you need to know, you can find there. All right. <laughs> All right, so my portfolio consisted on 17 entries or submissions. Normally the requirement for art schools is anywhere between 10 to 20. Um, so I stuck with a good 17. The first piece I'd start off in every portfolio submission is entitled Morning Routine, and it was done last summer with Prisma Colored Pencils on paper. I thought that this was a really strong piece to begin with, as it's essentially an introduction to me, because it's a self-portrait, and I think that the topics of morning and waking up seemed really fitting to begin with. So yeah, for the description of this piece, I wrote, this is what my mirror is first greeted with every day as I run my daily face checks to see what new zits, blemishes, and creatures have decided to inhabit my skin. It's a scarily accurate and unfiltered self-portrait that's very personal to me, but is also representative of a universal experience for those struggling with acne and self-confidence. The next piece is an oil painting entitled The Filipina. I painted this also last year from an art class, and in the description I wrote, colorism is a prevalent issue in the Philippines as our Eurocentric beauty standards have favored fairer skin for decades. Taking visual inspiration from Norman Rockwell's gossips and vintage science posters, I painted 13 Filipino women whom I know personally or volunteered to be painted to celebrate Filipino beauty in all its colors and shades. So yeah, I was clearly trying to mimic some sort of vintage science-y poster that you can find on Pinterest, but with different faces. The next piece is another painting. At this point, my portfolio was arranged by medium, so all the paintings were put together first. So you're about to see a lot of oil paintings, so I apologize. But this is entitled Safest Danger. With this piece, I wanted to exhibit my ability to kind of just be imaginative of new environments and my ability to render space and also light. I used my room actually for reference and I included this in the description. My childhood bedroom was once a hiding place, a source of comfort, a sanctuary. Although the longer I reside in it, the more it serves as a daunting reminder of where else I'm expected to be by now. The next painting is entitled The Commuters, and I took this picture of my friends Dallas and Andy while we were riding a tricycle, and I will say, I generally just painted this picture because it looked really cool to me. It also conveniently fit into the theme of intimacy, which was one of the themes of my school exhibition. So yeah, I was killing a lot of birds with one stone with this painting. I wrote, While some displays of intimacy are more extravagant or passionate, others you may miss for not paying attention. In depicting more subtle forms of intimacy, I chose to capture mundane moments in day-to-day -day life that we often overlook. I was inspired by strangers I see in public showing affection in discreet ways, such as the lovely couple holding hands while riding a jeepney. Cute! This painting is one of my favorite pieces that I've done. It's entitled Girlhood Interrupted. Girlhood Interrupted is this phenomenon that I learned about from this video essay on YouTube. It's really cool. You should check it out. I feel like my description kind of somewhat explains it, so I'll just read it. Girlhood Interrupted is a phenomenon wherein young black girls are perceived to be more mature as compared to counterparts of other races resulting in discrimination. Their childhood is cut short and they must face the harsh realities of the world at an uncomfortable pace. So yeah, the woman in the painting is the older version of the child and I wanted to try to exhibit this false perception of 
ruined innocence and maturity by placing them side by side and i think it came out really well so next i really wanted to make sure that i had some paintings that were from life because most schools really appreciate drawings or paintings from observations so i included this three hour oil painting study that i did with my younger brother i really try to push myself to use unconventional colors and lighting so the light source is from below his face which creates this really cool effect and shadows on his face um, my parents also really like this one, which is why I don't have it with me right now, because it's hanging on a wall in our home. Yeah, there's not much to say about this because it's simply a study, so moving on. The second observational painting I included is entitled Enhancements, and I guess this is just the average still life that many schools are interested in seeing in your portfolio. Um, in order to add an element of storytelling, I decided to use my own makeup to create the setup. So for the description of this piece, I wrote in incorporating my own personal twist to a traditional observational still life. That's such a handful. Wow. I created the setup of this piece using my own makeup products that provide me the pockets of confidence I need to get through the day. There's a dash of guilt that comes with wearing makeup routinely and a common saying that products are meant to just enhance rather than cover. Though, I'd be lying by saying if I didn't do a lot more than just enhance. Ooh, it's so bright now. Yeah, the sun. The final painting, yes, finally, I know. There's been a lot of paintings, I'm so sorry. Um, but the final painting is entitled Everything's Under Control, which is sort of a continuation of the theme of enhancements. I didn't really think much of what this would contribute to my portfolio. I think I just really wanted to paint at the time I was making this and I had a specific vision of what I wanted to paint in my head and I really loved how it turned out, so I included it. So I think you can tell that my general rule of thumb of what to include in the portfolio for me is if you love it, just put it in there. My description was pretty short and it reads, many find comfort in their ability to control their appearance. The process of looking your best in order to feel your best is one that is both meticulous and therapeutic. This is very true, I generally do love getting ready. The next piece is finally not a painting and it is entitled Tali, which in Tagalog means to tie, as in to like tie hair. I used pens and watercolor for the original drawing which I showed earlier. Um, and I experimented with the lighting and the mood of the environment by adding shadows on Photoshop. For the description I wrote, after studying Utamaro's lovers in an upstairs room, I decided to approach the theme of intimacy in sibling relationships with a Japanese woodblock print inspired style. Beyond the realm of romantic intimacy, there's also a special closeness and bond formed through sisterhood, and my work depicts tying of the hair, an activity that may seem ordinary at the moment, but will forever be a treasured memory once old and grown. I don't have any sisters, I have three brothers, so I don't know what compelled me to choose this as my subject matter, but I liked how it turned out. So. This piece is entitled Phases, and it was done on Photoshop. I still don't think this is my strongest piece, but I just wanted to show that I am capable of doing digital work, but yeah, I do think the work is quite repetitive, and you can tell that I was very much just experimenting with the different features on Photoshop and drawing at the same time, but yeah, for the description I wrote, there are no waiting periods in life, no filler episodes, in-betweens, or gray areas. Life is a line made of equally valuable points. In spending a concerning amount of time waiting for the part it is expected to get better, our anticipation and hope blinds us from the fleeting value of the present. Yeah, I guess that just gives insight towards my inspiration of the composition and imagery. Next, we'll be moving on to the three-dimensional pieces, and the first one I have is entitled Underneath It All, and it's a dress that I sewed. I made this back in 2020 for art class and I included it in my portfolio because I wanted to show my ability to work with fabric and textiles in order to show movement and create a story and create shapes and forms. So yeah. The description that I wrote here reads, Experimenting with the movement and distressing of fabric, thread, and yarn, I wanted to represent the concept of skin being an outer layer, metaphorically and literally. Anatomically, skin is meant to conceal all the gory and monstrous looking system of organs. 
Whereas figuratively, this aspect of skin can represent our day-to-day efforts as human beings to appear composed and hide our inner turmoils. So I don't have this piece with me anymore since I don't have the dress form or the mannequin which I borrowed from my school, but I do still have the dress and it's around here somewhere. The next three-dimensional piece is a more recent sculpture from last year entitled The Kiss. I used clay to model the two heads and I used yarn to um, create some sort of pattern in between them and attach them to a wooden board. The yarn is meant to represent the emotional connection and feelings when sharing a kiss. With this piece, I not only wanted to show that I can work well with three-dimensional figures and forms, but I also wanted to show how I choose to represent um, concepts abstractly through my art. In the description, I wrote, the use of abstraction to represent a kiss not only allowed me to exhibit emotions that feel larger than life, but also served as a way to bridge the gaps caused by my lack of knowledge and experience in romantic intimacy as a young artist. The next piece is a collage, which is entitled, Oh, the Places You'll Grow. This piece really was an experimentation. Essentially, I just painted a girl with using gouache, and I thought, oh, what if I cut her up and put her in a different background? And I thought, what if I add newspaper and magazine cutouts to this? So what if I paint over that? And so on and so forth, and it led to this. So in the description, I wrote, an experimental piece making use of complementary colors, collage, depth, and shadow. Throughout the process, I was conceptually guided by this idea of life experience and how we gain various worldviews and perspectives in the process of growing, traveling, and being exposed to new people, cultures, and values. If I were to change something about this piece, it would definitely be the eyes. I feel like eyes are just such an overused and cliche motif. But yeah, by including this piece, I just wanted to emphasize that my process can be transformative in a way. For example, using painting and then like painting over it and cutting it out. Like, there's a lot of steps and layers and transformation that takes place. These next two digital collages were made this year and I included them in my portfolio because I really do love them a lot. I think that they show a different aspect to my style and show like different processes used such as the pencil sketch and then the photoshop and the collage. The first one I titled Holiday Consequences and I wrote, After the holiday season comes a wave of guilt concerning all the hearty meals, treats, and cheat days. When making use of digital processes, I incorporated a number of photorealistic textures, making the piece, along with the emotions captured, feel all the more real. The second one was entitled The Senior Year, and the description reads, I'm more than halfway done with my final year of high school, and I still have yet to go back to in-person school since March 2020. This piece merely depicts my current state as a senior, along with the negative feelings of many regarding the draining, repetitive schedule of online classes. My description here really sounds like a plea for help and I think it really was a plea for help because this accurately was how I looked in the beginning of the year. Um, But thankfully I did end up going back to school before I graduated. And finally, I included a couple of charcoal studies just to show some form of traditional drawing ability. I used a couple websites that like randomly generate images and give you a timer of how long you can look at the photo. So it was a bit of a challenge. And all I wrote was, with limitations placed on my ability to leave the house and take figure study classes, I found ways to challenge myself with a timer and online resources, experimenting with bold strokes, blending techniques, and cross-hatching methods. Lastly, I also included a couple of sketchbook pages just to show my thinking process and more loose style of sketching and drawing. And I wrote, whether I'm out and about waiting in terribly long lines, or playing around with a lamp and mirror at home, I use my sketchbook as a space for practice and studies. So yeah, that is my complete portfolio, all 17 pieces. But before I end this video, I also want to show what I did for the RISD challenge. And if you are not familiar, in order to apply to RISD, you have to submit a response into their challenge. Each year, there's a different prompt. Um, And this year was to create a piece in response to a pair of words. And the pair of words that I chose were chaos and order. There were two more, but I forgot what they were. And this was my response to the prompt. I will be honest, I busted my ass for this challenge and I actually had a lot of fun with it. So for my take on chaos and order, I made structures of windows, which give you insight towards the very complex lives of those who live inside. I used cardboard and all the paper that I could find and mini LED lights. And 
I submitted the video so they could see like how the piece looks in different lightings. But yeah, I'm really proud of this. I really love this a lot. So that's all I have to show for today. Thank you so much for watching, especially if you made it all the way to the end. Um, I hope you learned some, well, not really learned, but I hope that you at least got a bit more insight into what it's like to create and submit a portfolio for art school applications. So that's all. Um, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.